So I got a package in the mail the other day and I opened it up, started going through what was inside. I review a lot of accessories and cases and whatnot, so I didn't immediately get excited until I saw this pop out. And my immediate thought is, someone just sent me an iPhone 10. And much like you probably feel right now, I felt kind of the same way. I felt a little clickbaited, sorry. But yes, someone did actually send me, as you can see right here, a proper iPhone 10. It has the right weight, it has the right materials, but as you could probably hear there, it doesn't sound quite right. When you press the buttons, nothing happens. The buttons do actually press. The little notification toggle doesn't actually work, but it looks and feels for all intents and purposes just like an iPhone 10 will. The lightning port doesn't do anything. The lightning port is just a hollowed out empty section. I received a dummy phone in the mail from this company, the company that sent me these cases, Snug. And then I remembered, I actually spoke to them a while back, right around the time just before the iPhone 10 was announced. They asked if I wanted to check out the iPhone 8 cases. They never said a word about the iPhone 10, so I said, sure. Never heard a word back from them until these showed up. And it came with the dummy phone, which is a good thing because the iPhone 10 isn't actually going to be out for another few days. I will admit it, I did go ahead and pre-order it, but my pre-order is like middle of December, so I'm no hurry there. But this does give me the chance to look at these, and I figure while I'm looking at accessories and things, I'll also talk a little bit about fast charging on the iPhone 10 and the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, and whether or not I think it's worth it. So as far as these cases, like I said, they sent three out, the Vision series, Pulse series, and Infinity series. The Vision series, I think, is nine bucks on Amazon. The other two are about 13, and this is what you get with the Vision. It's clear, it's TPU, it has the plastic around the outside, and when you fit it over the phone, which is why this phone is here, so I can just get an accurate feel and size and shape and everything, the camera bump is all free, and actually it does provide a little protection for the camera bump. The buttons are all still workable. The notification toggle is gonna to be reachable. All the ports are open. And this does have plastic all around the corners, so it would provide a little bit of protection. The Pulse series says it's designed in London on the inside of here. It has a nice grippy texture all over the back. And again, it has that plastic bumper around the outside and the TPU case. Go ahead and stick the phone in there. This one does not really raise up that much around the camera hump, but it does still cover it up. So when you put the phone down, it's gonna be flush, except maybe for this little band, but just laying it down on the table, it doesn't actually do anything. It doesn't make it wobble. The buttons are all still working. You can still reach the notification toggle. Ports are all still open. And these are two part cases, as I mentioned. So you can technically take them apart, but you don't have to do that to put it on and off. Just pull and click in the right places. The last one of these cases, the Infinity Series. There you have it. Same sort of interior as the last one, although this one is all black on the back. It is also two pieces, but it's two pieces in a really weird way. So I'm gonna feel a little weird about this one because it doesn't have plastic around these corners. It's TPU all around the corners, and the plastic is right in the middle of the back. It does, again, cover the camera hump. It has an opening here for the power Siri whatever button, but then actual button inserts here and a notification toggle still open and working. Ports on the bottom all seem to be open and working as well. But again, this one's all TPU around the corner. So if you drop this, you're gonna probably be in trouble. So of the three, I think I like the first two better, the Pulse and the Vision, just because they do have plastic around the corners to try to help save the phone if it drops. And when and if I do actually get the iPhone 10 in hand, I might come back and talk about these again, or I might talk about other cases that happen to show up between now and then. I also received, as you might expect, some cases from Lumion for the iPhone 8 Plus, this phone that I've been using as my daily driver. And since I have been using this as my daily driver, I've already opened and been using one of these, the Lumion Diamond case. Diamond? I can never pronounce that right. I'm guessing it's diamond because it kind of sounds like diamond. Just like the other ones I was looking at before, you kind of slip it into place over it. Even though it is a two-part case, the TPU and then the bumper around the outside, I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I didn't think that this was a great design up until a couple of days ago, but you've got the buttons that still work, the notification toggle you can still reach, and the ports and everything are all open on the bottom. But what I'm saying there is I've dropped this and this case saved my phone. It has just a little bit of a raised lip around the edge, which by the way, these did as well, but this little raised lip around the edge saved my screen. Not sure where or when it happened to be honest, but it fell probably three or four feet from my hand to the ground, leaving up by the power button this little scratch, this little notch actually in the plastic, little notch in the top, and it did hit face down on the ground afterwards, and there is not a single scratch on the screen. I did get very, very lucky in this case, but I'm very glad I had a case on the phone, because otherwise, 
all that metal and all that glass would probably be shattered. Even though it's supposed to have the absolute best glass and blah blah blah, it's it's gonna scratch up and it's gonna break because that's what they do. Now the other case I've not even started to look at yet. This is the Guardian case. Both of these retail for 14 or 15 bucks on Amazon depending on the day. And this one should be somewhat similar to the diamond case I've been using. But instead of being the clear TPU, it's black. It does have a little bit of texture to it. And actually that's part of the reason why I went ahead and just started using this one is because even though this is clear and I kind of don't like that, that clear TPU for some reason provides a little bit of extra grippiness that I prefer. But if you like this texture and this feel, this is fine too. Now that one was a little bit more difficult to install. I did have to actually peel the corner of this bumper back to be able to put it on, but it did go on pretty easily. And actually in the hand, it feels nice and comfortable. It feels pretty slim. The buttons do all still work. Notification toggle is still open. It does have a little bit of a lip and all the ports on the bottom are open as you would expect. And just trying it out there, I was actually able to go ahead and switch the bumpers. So I can technically go back to having an unblemished bumper on the diamond case and I'm okay with that. One way or the other, they're still pretty decent cases. They're not the absolute end all be all of protection for your phone, but it's better than not having one at all. But the last thing I wanted to talk about again, coming back to the iPhone 8 and 8 plus and 10 and how they all support fast charging. They do support it but not directly out of the box. In order to get fast charging on these devices, you've got to invest some money. Now from a previous video, I actually already had this. This is the Tron Smart wall charger with a USB Type-C power delivery and Quick Charge 3. Quick Charge for the newer iPhones relies upon USB PD to lightning, which means you do have to have a special cable, the USB-C to lightning cable. Now the crappy thing about this cable is it comes in at a minimum of 25 bucks. If you want the one meter cable like I've got right here, 25 bucks. If you want the longer one, the two meter cable, it's 35 bucks. And I probably should have gotten that just because there have been more than a few times where, man, it would be really nice to have a few extra feet to be able to reach this from here to there. That's a down the road. Maybe I'll buy the other one, but I haven't yet. The times where it has become an issue like that is when I'm in the car. And that's why I bought this as well. This is a Trienium Atomic Drive Series Universal Car Charger with Type CPD and Quick Charge 3. The other phones that I have work with Quick Charge, so this is actually good on two fronts. Now you might be asking, does it really make a difference? Is it really going to charge it that much faster? Yes, yes it does. For me, the iPhone 8 Plus does not have great battery life. I know what most people out there are saying that it's amazing, but the way that I use the phone, it's not. Because most of the time I get in the car, I set the phone down in the seat beside me with Pokemon Go running. Now on my iPhone SE, if I kept the phone plugged into the car with the included cable, just simple 5 volt 1 amp or 5 volt 2 amp, I could have Pokemon Go running and never lose a percentage of battery. But since this has such a larger screen, I can keep this plugged in with a regular charger up to 2.4 amps and it still drains the battery. And it drains it so fast, I can drive across town and back like a 20 minute trip I'll lose 30% of my battery. I'll get back and be at 70% with it just sitting in the seat beside me with the screen on. That's ridiculous. I mean, put it this way. I drove across town and back and I went to the gym this morning. I did not have the screen on while I was at the gym. I listened to an audiobook and I had Pokemon Go running when I was in the car, sitting in the seat beside me, not touching it. And I am at 60% right now and it's 10 a.m. It's 10.30 in the morning. 60% and I'm not even halfway through the day yet. I know a lot of people are gonna say that's great, but there have been more than a few times where I've gotten back and it's been at 50 or 40% and that's where this little setup has really come in handy. Because again, when I'm charging with the included charger or even any of my 2.4 amp chargers, it takes a really long time to charge. But using these cables and chargers, I've found one or two percent per minute charging consistently, even with the screen turned on. So I can have Pokemon Go running and I can plug it in, 15 minute drive across town, 15% charge gained. Whereas before I would have lost 15%. Wow, this video is really gone all over the place. So first and foremost, thanks to Snug for sending out these cases and the iPhone 10 dummy so I could actually get a chance to feel this in my hand without having to drive to another city to, to get my hands on the iPhone 10. Thanks to Lumion for sending out cases for the iPhone 8 Plus and saving my phone since I dropped it the other day. And no thanks to Apple for making a product that I have to pay an additional lots of money to be able to charge it quickly. But again, I can't complain all that much because in order to get quick charge on my other phones, yes, I can use the included cable and whatnot, but if I'm in the car, I have to have a charger for that. And most of the time you do have to have a cable that is capable of supporting that. So you have to pay extra for that too. So yes, it sucks to have paid more. This was about 20 bucks, 25, and these are about 30 bucks, but I don't think they sell this particular one anymore. And if you paid for the one from Apple, the direct wall charger, it's like 60 something dollars or $70. Go for the third party ones. They 
they definitely still get the job done. And they work with things like the Nintendo Switch and the new MacBooks and MacBook Pros. There's no reason not to. If you are in this ecosystem, if you use these type of products, that's the good thing. It works with multiple things. I mean, technically this cable is also supposed to work with the newer iPad Pros that support faster charging, although it hasn't worked properly on my 12.9 inch, but mine was an older one. It's the first generation iPad Pro 12.9, either way. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up before I ramble on entirely too long. Let me know what you think about all of these things. Let me know what you think about the iPhone 10. In my opinion, early opinion, ridiculously overpriced, but it's new technology for the channel. I'm going to try it out for myself. I'm going to try it out because I'm curious. Thank you guys as always for watching. Hit the thumbs up if you liked it. Hit the thumbs down if you got lost, if you're confused, if you just hate what I'm doing here, that's that's okay. Subscribe to the channel though. If you are new here, if you wanna be notified when I put out new videos, you can also ring that little notification bell so you do get notifications on your phone, laptop, desktop, wherever, whenever I do upload new videos. I try to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, have not been doing very well at that lately, but I try. And I will see you again next time.